Hello, EVS Nation. This is Chuck Bontrager coming to you from my basement studio in Chicago land. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks for the Electric Violin Shop for setting this up. Thanks to Matt Bell for figuring out how to foist some of his work onto some unsuspecting schlub sitting around in the middle of the pandemic with nothing else to do. Yeah. Let's talk close mics. Yeah? What do you say? We're going to do a close mic shootout today. <clears throat> We're going to go through three different types of mics, basically the three best contenders for the title of best close miking solution. We're going to put them through paces on three different instruments, violin, viola, octave viola, in a couple of different situations. Fairly controlled studio-like environment and also a kind of an approximation of a loud stage application. I don't technically yet own any of these. I'm going to try to be as objective and thorough, bordering on exhaustive as possible. Okay, next, let's meet the contestants. Long the standard for close miking instrument solutions, the DPA4099 has a retail price of $619. The package includes the microphone, gooseneck, clip-on mount, a semi-solid travel case, and a padded zipper bag. The PSIMK comes with a vast array of mounting options to accommodate almost any instrument or non-instrument mounting situation. It all comes in a firm plastic carry case and retails at $499. A recent entrant to the field, the Shure TL47, comes with a behind-the-bridge clip-on mount, two windscreen options, a brightness cap, a firm carrying case, and retails at $399. All right, let's go over how this shootout's gonna work. Each of these microphones has essentially two placement options. In the case of the Twinplex, see the mount here holds on the underside of your strings and you can mount the mic very, very close to the bridge. You can also reverse this clip and put the mic over the top of the strings. This is going to give you maybe a little bit less of the bass response, a little bit less of the vibration of the top of the instrument, but a little bit more of the presence that you get from the bow. I'll be trying both options. If you wind up with one of these microphones, important safety tip, if you try reversing this clip, don't just flip it over, actually take the mic out and turn it around because the holes on the clip are sized for thicker and thinner strings. Okay. In the case of the gooseneck microphones, those mounts, let's show you what I mean. In the case of the gooseneck, everything mounts here on the side, and the two generally considered best options are having it pointed a little bit behind the bridge in between the bridge and the tailpiece, or if you need more bass response, aiming it right toward the F hole. Now, I did three and a half years, roughly 1,100 performances on the Hamilton production in Chicago. We used DPAs, and those engineers liked the gooseneck up and over the rear part of the strings, or the short strings, as I call them. Okay, But we'll be trying both options, so you'll be listening to six different sound files. I'm going to give them letters. At the end of the video, Matt Bell will tell you which was which. And then as a control for the studio application, I also will be using, in the same little isolation tent in the back of my studio, this Loughton F, uh, FC 357 large condenser about 30 inches away. So you'll be able to hear what the tent sounds like, what the instrument sounds like a couple of feet away, and then compare it to the close mic signal. Yeah? Then, since these microphones are designed to not only get you a good signal representative of the sound of your instrument, they're also designed to essentially filter out, or not really filter out, but just not listen to in the first place. Anything else that might be going on, we're going to create a little bit of a live situation. See these two speakers over the back of my head? I'm going to have some Metallica playing through them, and then I'll be playing along on that octave viola. The octave viola, I think, is the perfect candidate for this because it, of these three instruments, by far has the least advantageous signal-to-noise ratio. <clears throat> I'll set up the condenser mic so you can hear how much sound the speakers are producing, and then I'll stand right in front of that mic <clears throat> and 
play along with each of the three close mics on the octave viola and you'll see just how much stage and room sound the three close mics are eliminating from your signal. Cool? Let's get started.
Let's get to that live test, shall we? I'm going to be standing a little bit farther back in this room, playing over the sound coming out of those speakers of a Metallica cover that I did with Dr. David Wallace a few years ago at Mark Wood's Rock Orchestra Camp. Who's that guy? We'll see just how much sound these close mics filter out. So if you all are inspired, please go to my YouTube page, check it out, like and subscribe. for the dramatic conclusion. It's a couple of weeks later. It's at least 20 degrees colder. I got a haircut. I also matriculated into grad school. It's what kept things for so long. You can congratulate me on both of those things in the comments. We're gonna reveal which microphone went with which letter now, and we'll leave it on the screen for a while. Couple of addendums to the procedure. So. I wound up not doing multi-position takes with the three close mic options because as I was getting into things and figuring out what might work, it became pretty obvious that for the twin plex, most of the time you're going to want it underneath the short strings. And for the two gooseneck options, most of the time you're going to want it over the short strings. It's not that the uh, gooseneck over the F hole idea or the twin plex on top of the strings weren't good ideas. Those could be very, very useful in certain situations or if an engineer wants another pass with a slightly different sound or you want to mix in something with a little bit more or less low end. But I think generally speaking, twin plex under the short strings, gooseneck, DPA, and the, uh, and the PS up over. Uh, the DPA, very clean, clear, even with a hint of warmth, which any engineer will tell you is a really tough combination to get in one microphone that would serve all of the string family. It's probably why these mics have been so popular for so long and will continue to be because they're great. Um, easy to mix, I would expect, and so the bigger the group, large orchestras that need close miking use a lot of these DPAs. They're great mics. Twinplex, very interesting. It's a very vocal sound, which makes sense because it's very closely related to their newest lavalier, and you could use this mic as a lavalier mic if you needed it to. Um, very versatile, great value at only 400 bucks, and having it under the strings, this is not to be underestimated. If I'm on a busy stage, lots of things are happening, lots of people jumping around, I wouldn't mind having an a mic under the strings instead of mounted up over on a gooseneck that could easily get knocked out of position. Yeah. The PS, IMK, really big fat signal, right? I was amazed. There was a, a first pass on my 
uh, on my regular alto viola, and I thought I was listening to the octave viola. The sound was that was that warm. Also has a lot of character to it. Infinite mounting options. All very very good mics. Okay, for my money. I think I'm going to pick up one of these PSs. All that low end for the viola and the octave viola stuff. Lots of character to get in on the fiddle. Yeah, it picks up some of the tapping sound on the fingerboard, but I was able later to find some mic positions that avoided that and still kept the guts of the sound. Thanks so much for sticking with us throughout this kind of exhaustive video. Yeah, thanks very much to Matt Bell and everyone at the Electric Violin Shop for... Uh, for throwing me this project. This was a lot of fun. I have a feeling it might lead to more gear reviews on my own YouTube page. Speaking of, go to my page, go to the EVS page. You're already on it because you're watching this. Like, subscribe, help keep us going. Thanks again. See you in the next one.